Welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create pixel perfect textures for your mind test models. Now I've created a tutorial like this in the past, but I have discovered some new add-ons and methods that are quite a bit easier than what I presented in the previous video, so I thought I would create an update to the original content. Um, we're actually going to start with pixel perfect model though, because I need a model to do a texture on. So we're just going to start off by changing the viewport here. So generally speaking, uh, you'll see here, we can't adjust our subdivisions and that's because your default settings, unless you've already changed this have your unit system set to either metric or imperial. I believe it defaults to metric. You want to set it to none. Um, and then you can change your subdivisions and that'll change the grid here in the background. Uh, it should be visible in video, although maybe not amazing. I usually use 16 because, you know, 16 pixel textures, although I usually do all my textures in 32 pixel. But yeah, if the subdivision box here is grayed out for you, you just need to come on over to the scene properties tab, go to units and change your unit system to none. So with that, uh, with that cleared up, I'm going to go ahead and, and make something real quick as just going to be really simple because this isn't actually about modeling at all. That's, that's all stayed the same as before. So I'm just going to make a, a little, a little box. And we're going to push in all the sides here, just so we have a little something to work with. Do something like that, and we'll select the whole thing. Shifty, duplicate it, move it up. Grab the top of it, do something like that. Pull the sides in like so. Um, we'll do this. I'll grab this back face do the same thing there then I'll actually go ahead and delete the faces off of that because they'll be invisible because we're gonna do this and what is this little thing I don't know but um, that's not important it's just a an object that we can do some testing with I'm gonna go ahead and turn off wireframe on that and just do um actually I think it's under visibility no oh here we go display as solid what if I do rendered though do I need to do texture not 100% sure I should have really just created a new item okay well anyway we have an object now and we're gonna have to unwrap this so I'm just gonna go ahead Go to edge select. I'm not really too worried about my unwrapping here. So I'm just gonna do a, wow. Wow, this is, I'm doing great. I'm just gonna do a pretty basic unwrap here. W mark seams. So we'll just be folding this top off. And then, cause this is already marked here. We'll go ahead and do those. We'll mark those. And we'll mark these. And that should be right on that. Go ahead and mark seam. Unwrap. We can't see that it's unwrapped, so we have to hop over to the UV editing tab here. Select everything, and you'll see we have three objects. Now, in the previous video, I did a method where you manually counted the grid spaces here. A really slow, really inefficient, terrible way to do things. There is an add-on called Text Tools. I will have the link in the video description as well as on the associated web page. This tool makes things a kajillion times better. There is an option here under, so you go to your UV editor, you gotta have your sidebar showing. That's uh, the letter N to toggle that on and off. It's the bottom option once the add-on is installed and enabled. If you go to the UV layout portion, you have a section down here uh, which says Texel. And you're going to want to set that to whatever resolution you are using for your texture. So I'm doing a 32 pixel resolution, so I'm going to set that to 32. If you were doing 16 pixel resolution, you would set it to 16. 
and then you just select all of your UVs with A and click apply, you will get an error that is to be expected. It says no texture found. Assign checker map or texture. So you can either just go to your little drop down up top. I'm doing a 32, so I can pick 32 there and I can go ahead and click checker map and it'll add in a checker map, which at 32 pixel resolution doesn't really give me much. So I'll just go ahead and go to a higher. So there you can see it's it's a checkerboard with different colored squares in it. You could, all, of course, also load in an actual texture, but assuming you don't have an actual texture yet, that's kind of impossible to do. So we have this. I am now going to, with all my UV selected, hit apply here. And we will notice, okay, a 32 pixel texture is not large enough. I'm also gonna go ahead into the, no, wrong place, go ahead into the texture here. And I'm just gonna change the linear to closest and that'll give me my crisp edges on the textures here. So we should notice that all of our edges, oh, actually, you know what? We won't write as of now. I'm gonna go ahead and re-unwrap that and redo this and I'm going to do snap to pixels corner and I'll just select everything and move a little bit. So now our pixels should all be snapped to where they should be. And we will notice now that this little red line is half of this width, which is what we want. Um, same thing with that one. The red line here is two pixels tall, one pixel wide. So everything's matching up. I know obviously there's too much UV data per the amount of image data available. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to a 62 by 62 pixel image. We can click the resize button, but that, oh, in this case actually works. It makes it a larger, I thought I was just gonna scale it. Uh, it's probably because it's a built-in type of thing. Um, doing that, however, actually doubles because when you scale the image, it automatically scales the UV with it. So we could scale 0.5, that's one way to do it, or we could go ahead and redo that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the full item selection and so we can see kind of what we're working with here and realize that our image is still not large enough. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to 128, which should give us enough space. Select everything, apply. If you don't select everything, if you just select one UV island or group, whatever you want to consider that, and say we're going to do this at a 64 pixel resolution, apply, it'll only do that specific one. So it is important to have everything selected when you run it. Otherwise, yeah, it doesn't work. And I'm going to have to go back over here and do this to closest once more so that our, our edges are all sharp. And then you can move these around to, you know, however you want to match them up. That overlaps, so can't do that. I'm just going to go ahead and do something like that. That looks fine. Everything here, as far as our edges, is matching as it should. So this is great. Now we're going to go ahead, uh, because the unwrapping is done, and we're going to go with the painting the texture, which turns out uh, is really easy to do with a bit of kung fu magic. Um, unfortunately, you can't see this screen. I will uh, put a screenshot here of what I'm doing. I apologize for the very small everything here. Um, it does not appear as if I can change the UI size in GIMP, which is unfortunate. But what we're going to do is create an image. So I've created a, just a blank image here, 128 by 128, because that was the size we used in Blender for our UV. And we're going to hop on over to the Paths tab. Now, if you don't see the Paths tab there, I believe you can find it in the Dockable Dialogs drop-down menu in the Windows. There's not a shortcut key for it. We're going to right-click in here, and we are going to import a path. Now, unfortunately, you can't see any of this because of screen recording, but we're just going to browse to the location where I saved that SVG I exported from Blender. 
which you also couldn't see. And we will just toggle the visibility on it with this little eyeball. I don't know why when it gets imported, it's set to invisible, but that's how it works. So now we have this beautiful pink outline that is our texture. So what I can do now is take a brush here and because this is a pretty pretty basic and simple thing I can just do that oh I forgot to do the whole bottom half of it let's go back and do that bada boom bada bing and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a different color here I'll do a red and um, I'll just draw the outline of this real quick now obviously you would want to make your texture whatever the texture is actually going to be um, because this is just for testing and demonstration purposes we're just going to leave it at that i'm going to go ahead and throw some hsv noise on this filter noise hsv noise you can't see any of the dialogues that are open here again that's just a, a downside of the screen recording but this just adds a whole bunch of noise in and the main reason for doing this is so we can see the noise in the texture when we get back in Blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and load it into Blender. All right, so I have the texture loaded into Blender here. So you can see we've got the gray, the red, and then just the green background color on there. And if we go ahead and look at this, um, let me turn the, oh yeah, let's turn the spec completely off. There we go. So looking at it, I did a lot of noise with a strong noise level so hopefully this shows up into the video pretty well so you can see that there's two pixels here to a one space there one space there two pixels so we have double the pixel resolution of the mesh mesh resolution if you want to look at this as being mesh resolu resolution wow that's a tongue twister um yeah so that saves you quite a bit of work because in the previous method it was counting off the spaces here and then we're just all entirely guessing where to draw your bits in, which extremely inefficient. Now, um, if you're switching back and forth between your image editor and Blender and you're resaving your file, you can reload the image in with Alt-R when you are, uh, you have Blender, uh, um, you can reload the image in, uh, all you have to do is be in the UV editor window here and alt R will reload the image I didn't make any changes so you didn't see anything but I can do a quick quick little change roo there and it loads it in and you'll see obviously it updates to here so that's that there are a bunch of other options with text tools but um honestly I don't know that uh, you know, a lot of these are really things you would want to be doing. I don't know why this one messed up these lines. Something something jank went down there. I think I can just go ahead and... Okay, it's, it's just going a little wonky on that for some reason. I don't know why. I'll just put that back here. Yeah, so that's still right. Uh, no, it's not right. Okay, very interesting. Now it is. So yeah, there's a lot of different options here. You can uh, rotate things. You can mirror them. Uh, this I, I don't understand what the point of this is. Like it takes all of your selected items and lines them up. <laughs> which seems, which seems kind of silly. It's like, okay, so if I lined everything up to there, I just wrecked my whole UV layout. See, so I'll do, you know, I want to line it to the left edge. It just squishes it all into nothingness. <laughs> like, okay, what, what's the point of that? Now, obviously, if you had just two and say they weren't where they were supposed to be, you can bump those over, but I don't know. I don't know what the point of that is. There's, uh, there's cropping, which... Yeah, most of this is stuff you're not going to want to use if you're doing pixel perfect, perfect textures. You can uh, randomize positions, all kinds of extra things here. Again, most of this isn't stuff you're going to want to do 
for doing pixel perfect textures. There's also baking where you can bake all kinds of things. So there's a lot of extra options, but I'm not gonna actually like go over any of them because, well, you know, you wouldn't most likely be using these in my test. Of course, if you were creating high resolution images, which you certainly could, um, I did a stream a couple days prior to this and we did an image that was 6400 by 6400 and it loaded into my test just fine. So you could go super high resolution if you wanted to. And in that case, some of these other options may serve to be a little more useful. But um, for pixel perfect at low resolution, 1632 pixel, you'll find that uh, this works quite well. So if I set it to 16 pixel, just just to see it here. You can see that each pixel gets one space of the grid, which should be expected. That's gonna wrap this video up. Um, the link to the text tools add-on for Blender will be in the video description as well as on my website. So if you are interested in using that, and uh, I definitely would have to say if you are doing meshes and you're doing textures and you're trying to do pixel perfect this thing is a huge time saver i can't tell you how much time it saved me already in the short while that i have been using it very helpful tool you should definitely have it thanks for watching tune in next week for another video and i will see you then